While Westminster's self-styled ruling classes squirm in their moment of shame, they haughtily instruct us that we are not to take these sensational lockdown files seriously and must instead wait patiently for the results of the official COVID inquiry, which, if we're lucky, should come through about the same time as we fail to achieve carbon net zero in 2050. It is precisely this superior attitude on the part of our allegedly elite body politic that informs ludicrous health secretary Matt Hancock's horrible approach to government throughout the COVID omni-shambles. Treat the people like a bunch of serfs to be manipulated in the all-important battle for favourable headlines and career advancements. Bottle up news of a dangerous new variant and release it strategically to deliberately terrify the peasants into complying with the ridiculous rules and regulations that did so little to stop the spread of the virus. Absolutely out Outrageous. We don't need to wait at least a decade for the snail-paced COVID inquiry to tell us what, thanks to Isabel Oakshot's shocking WhatsApp gate revelations, we already know now that jumped up politicians such as Hancock were making it up as they staggered along, that they didn't follow the science, that they acted like authoritarian despots swirling around in a morass of wrong decisions that cost thousands of lives and wrecked the economy. So let these pompous little people do their media rounds. Let them tell the BBC, the state broadcaster that so disgracefully spread their lockdown propaganda, that the newspapers are not the place where they should be judged all together now. Oh yes, they are. Oh, how they hate the free press and the speed at which it operates. And let them kid themselves that this isn't their day of reckoning, that this isn't the moment when they got rumbled, when we found out that the boys and the girls in the Westminster bubble are just a gaggle of overgrown, privately educated school kids sending each other stupid emojis. L, O, bloody L. If you didn't laugh, you'd cry. Let that that epic failure, Boris Johnson, imagine that we haven't got his number. Let him make a total fool of himself, nominating his dubious dad for a knighthood, which, if this country is not a complete joke, he must not, of course, get. Don't arise, Sir Stanley. Stay right where you are, Mr Johnson, and let us, the British people, call time on this stupefying system of ill-deserved privilege. Let us call time on the us and them. Let us tell them that they work for us. We are their bosses, not the other way round. We are at an MP's expenses point of history, a jaw-dropping insight into the chaos of a nation in the hands of laughable half-wits. The lockdown files must ring in much-needed, long-awaited changes. Here's what has to stop. Politicians thinking they're better than the rest of us, thinking they have the right to play with our minds, thinking they're the generals and we're the cannon fodder, thinking their hopeless war against the virus was a triumph. It wasn't. It was an unmitigated disaster for which we will continue to pay an astronomical price for many years to come. The carping cabinet crew are queuing up to bleat to Laura Kunzberg about what a shame it is that the pesky public discovered the terrible truth at a time when it matters, as opposed to 10 years or more from now when it won't matter. We win, they lose. Now we must consolidate our victory and put politicians in their place below us.